Hello guys, in this video we will work on our scanner, scanner system. We are going to make our scanner more generic so we can use it for different uh, types to scan for. Uh, for example, our enemy player is now only scanning for players, but maybe it would, we want it to scan for um, obstacles where it can hide or, or whatever. So what we're going to do, we're going to first um, make our scanner more um, uh, more generic. So if we open it up and we go to our uh, scan for uh, targets, we're going to, instead of we're going to uh, scan and um, assign a target, we are going to return a possible, uh, uh, the, the targets, which are in our field of view. And then the script calling this scanner can then sort out what kind of method he wants to use to select a, a priority target. So we're, we're going to remove the um, the check here for the closest target and we're going to return a list of the target types. Yeah. So to do it, let's make the public list and then you add in the T keyword, which uh, basically means uh, a generic type. And then we say uh, scan for targets and then you open up the less than and then you do it and the same like this. So basically this means when we are calling this method, we will pass in the class we want to scan for, the component we want to scan for, and then it will return a list of those targets, yeah? of those components. Um, so basically this is going to be exactly the same, but instead of get component player, we're going to say get component T, which is if we add scan for targets players, exactly the same. Now, and here we're going to change it to um, our result counter, results y, so we don't have to uh, um, cast it to anything. Um, yeah, we have a, uh, a list here with players. Let's remove this. We don't need it here. Also, this is going to be uh, different. Uh, but first things first, so scan for targets here, let's make a new uh, list of T, let's call this targets equals to a new list of T. Come on, oh we need to, uh, no we need nothing, new list T. Yeah, come on, it's early morning here. Okay. So now we have a new uh, target list, so we can, um, uh, we, we are not going to, if we have one target, get one target. So if you um, maybe uh, uncomment this, or maybe even better, just uh, copy it to your, uh, copy it to your buffer, or how do you call it? Um, just make a copy of that, of this section, so we can use it later. Now, if we have added all the targets, we're going to say a prepared scan again. So it will do a new uh, scan. And then we're going to say return targets. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, of course, the prepare for scan uh, cannot scan again because we don't have the type we want to scan. So what we're going to do, we're also going to re remove this here. We're gonna make an event here um, when we are ready to uh, scan. And I think we can remove our on target selected too. Let's make this uh, on scan ready. And just a system action with uh, nothing. Then we say uh, prepare scan. We're gonna say uh, timer add. And we're gonna add the. Um, on uh, check if the on scan ready is set. Okay. So now when we are, um, yeah, I don't think we need this anymore here. So remove this part too. Okay. So basically we're going to do scan for targets, return a list of the components we are looking for. Um, let's uh, get rid of this too. You don't really need it anymore. 
Uh, it's going to return a list of the targets, then it will say prepare scan, and then within the time scan it will uh, raise this event, so we can scan for targets again. Yeah. Okay. Now in all our uh, in our player script, our enemy player script. Come on. Now, now we got an error here, but that doesn't really matter. Um, let's open up our enemy player. Now this doesn't work anymore because we have uh, removed this. Um, but what we're gonna do? We're gonna do the um, on scan ready here. So scanner on scan ready. We make this new method here. Uh, let's. Um, yeah, I don't think we yeah we need this here. Maybe we can change this method here to something else. Let's call this uh, set um, destination to priority target. Maybe a little bit long, but that's okay. Let's remove this and let's make a new uh, method. Uh, a few variables here. Uh, one for our player, and we call this. Uh, uh, priority target and a list of player we need the uh, generic here a list of player which will hold our uh, targets yeah which we get from the scanner so um, here we're gonna say uh, priority target transform Okay. Now, if we so basically in our on scan already, we're gonna do a pretty much the same we did in our. Uh, oh, I I uncopied the uh, the the part I wanted to copy here, but that's okay. I'll just uh, type it again. Um, so basically, what we're gonna do here is about the same thing we did in our scanner previously. So first, we're gonna say uh, if a priority target. If that's um, not null, we're gonna return. So we only want to do a scan if we don't have any targets right now. And then we say my targets equals to player scanner. Um, oh, we don't have a reference to a player scanner here yet. Oh yeah, here scanner. I'm sorry. Let's maybe rename this to player scanner. Oops. Player scanner. And then we say player scanner um, scan scan for targets. Now you can see I can add in the uh, the type here. So we're gonna scan for player. So it will scan for any anything in line of sight with the component of player. Maybe this should be called scan for targets with component or something. But uh, let's keep it like this for now. So now we have our targets. Now we're gonna say if the um, if my targets count equals to one, then we say our uh, priority target equals to my targets, and then the first one uh, zero. Or else we're gonna say um, we're gonna make the method here for selecting a, a, the closest target. So make a private void select closest target mm -hmm. which takes in the uh, let me check here which checks uh, which takes in the list of player targets and then we're gonna say a flow closest target equals to player scanner and now we need the range of the scanner let's see uh, this one is private so let's make this uh, uh, accessible uh, maybe a little bit different so let's make a, a public float scan range which will uh, get and then we say if our range trigger uh, equals to null range trigger equals to get component sphere collider and then we return our range trigger radius 
So, um, I think this is always a sign though, but um, we could, well, let me see here. No, let, let's keep it like this. Yeah, we have it in start here, but um, we could get rid of this. I think right now. Um, let me see here. Where do we use this range trigger? Right here. Then we get the radius. Yeah, let's remove it. I'm sorry. Let's um, remove the star there. And then here we can also do our scan range. So, because this is the only part where we are using uh, this. Okay, let's get back to our closest target or in our enemy player. Then we say scan range. So, uh, this is what we did previous. Well, we set it to the maximum range of our, um, of our scanner. And then we're gonna loop through our, for each uh, fire, let's call this a possible target in our uh, my targets and yeah, we don't need to pass in uh, this variable here and then we say if uh, factor 3 distance transforms position from our transforms position towards a possible target uh, transform position I'm a little bit slow if this is less than our closest target, we're gonna say priority target. Prior, prior. Equals to possible target. Yeah. So here, if we have a count of one, we say we select the priority target and otherwise we will go for our method here. Um if now if we are here we can say if our priority target not equals to no we can say set destination to priority target I think this should work um, at least we're not getting uh, the script have fixed itself um, we are scanning for a player so let's see if we remove the patrol, see what happens. Hmm. All right, that's probably because we need, uh, yeah. I added the ragdoll here uh, to my enemy player. I'm not sure if you did it already. Um, if you don't, you need to, you will need to create a new ragdoll. Um, let me see. Yeah, so, we can do this right away. We can add a ragdoll, uh, a ragdoll script. Uh, I removed my uh, ragdoll test here. So, if you want to go ahead and create a ragdoll for your um, SWAT for your um, for your enemy player, yeah. Uh, if you forgot how it works, just go to uh, select your game object and go to. Uh, was it game object 3d object and then your rectal and uh, assign all the uh, assign all the uh, the bones to uh, to the rectal and hit create yeah okay so now let's make a new uh, rectal script here so let's call this um, uh, well we could maybe even make it here in our uh, in our shed because we probably can use this more so let's call this uh, ragdoll ragdoll enabler or something like that but I'm gonna just go for ragdoll and here we're gonna do about the same thing uh, we did in our ragdoll test so we make a reference to an animator animator and we're gonna say our private uh, rigid body body parts. Now in our start method, we are going to get our body parts from our transforms children. 
get components in children all our really rigid bodies from our children and then we say uh, our method here a public void enable ragdoll will value this will uh, disable our animator or enable it and for our uh, body parts we're gonna uh, set the kinematic value so body parts equals to not value yeah again we doing uh, we are making the a not value here so we return we are uh, reversing the bool so if we pass in the true it's going to be false yeah. you could call this disable ragdoll too but uh, the matter of preference okay now with our ragdoll uh, set first when we start we uh, always disable our ragdoll And let's assign this to our player. I'm sorry, not to our player here. To our uh, SWAT here. And then we assign the animator. Okay. Okay, so now with our ragdoll in place, um, we should have no longer see. Yeah, now it's not going uh, crazy here. Okay. So that's it for this video where we have added our um, a James or scanner to make a generic scan. Um, now maybe one more thing I would like to do um, because if you look here we got a sphere collider and our capsule collider and when we are shooting from our player so when we when we will start making health for our uh, for our for our enemy player it will also trigger the sphere collider here uh, because we are checking um, if when it collides with something or a projectile if it's uh, it, and it will look for any script with our destructible attached so what we're going to do we're going to make a new, new empty game object here let's call this scanners and then we're going to add our player scanner here uh, and we're going to I don't think we can remove it here because we still have the enemy player uh, depending on it. Um, but let's add our um, scanner here. Adds the sphere collider, make sure it's set to a trigger, set it to a suitable range, maybe 15. And uh, scan speed every five seconds or whatever and uh, at 90 degrees. Don't forget to set, uh, every, uh, mod to everything and then uncheck our player layer for this scanner then yeah and now open up our player uh, again let's remove our uh, required component of our scanner here let's make this one serializable serialized field i mean so we can assign it in our uh, in the inspector okay now <coughs> we should be able to remove the component yeah we can remove the sphere collider here as well and then go to your enemy player and assign uh, the player scanner and yeah, this will do uh, pretty much the same um, still uh, seems like it's not assigned or something we assign it here let's uh, Let's check it. Oh yeah, we are getting the component, of course. We need to remove this part here. Then it will, then it will work. Okay, let's also actually make use of our unscan ready after the start method right away. Well, that's it for this uh, this video. Um, you can see, by the way, that our patrol is walking, uh, uh, even though we have set our enemy patrol enabled to false. Uh, we will check this in our uh, in our next video. Uh, fix it. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much for your time and all. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.